Class, a podcast providing a musical adventure for anyone looking to learn about music. My name is Mr. Johnson, and I'll be your guide through this musical journey, and for that, I am not sorry. Here's how Remote Control Music Class works. We start off with the singing segment. Let's do some singing! And on today's singing segment, we learn a traditional round called I Don't Care If the Rain Falls Down, featuring a very special guest singer. You'll have to listen to find out. Then we move off to the rhythm room. Time to read the music notes. Where we will clap some rhythms today. And surprise, surprise, Mr. Johnson is getting out of his comfort zone of 4-4 time. That's right. Listen to the rhythm segment to find out. After rhythm, we make our way to the wild card segment. (laughs) Where anything can happen. And on today's wild card segment, anything will happen. Not just anything, but something. Something fun. Anything fun. Something. Stop saying something in anything, Mr. Johnson. Okay, sorry. We're going to be taking a look at Ludwig von Beethoven's masterful Ode to Joy from his Ninth Symphony, where we will sing an English language version and learn an interesting recorder accompaniment that only uses two notes. So if you're interested in learning some Beethoven, I'd recommend you check out the wild card segment. And then we finally move off to the listening room. Shh! I'm trying to listen! Where we will Yet again, listen to some more Beethoven. I have a very interesting video. I think you will be thoroughly entertained with. And then at the end of the show, we clean it all up with the wrap-up, where we summarize our learning for the entire day. I give you directions on how to take a quiz. However, do not feel like you need to take the quiz. Instead, say, what do I want my musical journey to look like today? Because you are in control. You have the remote control. This is remote control music class. Buckle those safety belts. Let's do it. Let's do some singing. Okay, friends, let's do a little singing. How about we make a siren sound like this? Good. Let's start high and then go low. Take a look at the screen. Let's sing some letters. How about the letter S? We start at the bottom and work our way to the top. I find myself moving my head in the shape of an S. Ooh, what letter is next? The letter I. We're going to start all the way at the bottom and work our way straight up. I think we can make our I move faster than that. Ooh little faster, whoop, faster, whoop, faster, whoop. That's enough eyes, Mr. Johnson. How about the letter N? We go up, we go down, we go up. Here we go. Ooh, let's do the letter N again. And finally, we have the letter G. We're going to start all the way at the top of the G, work our way down and around and in. Here we go. I like the letter G. Make sure you don't end really high, because if you look where that tail ends, it kind of ends in the middle, right? Let's try it again. I like it. And if you paid attention to the letters, what word did that spell? S-I-N-G. I I think that spells sing. Okay, on today's singing segment, friends, we are going to revisit a song that we actually looked at all the way back in episode five of Remote Control Music Class. And that song is I Don't Care If The Rain Falls Down. And last time we worked on some rhythmic ostinati, ostinati being the plural of ostinato. But today, let's focus on just learning the melody. So let me sing it once for you, just to get the tune in our heads, and then we'll analyze the notes. Here we go. I don't care if the rain falls down, I'm gonna dance all day. I don't care if the rain falls down, I'm gonna dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away, I'm gonna dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away, I'm gonna dance all day. 
Excellent. Let's analyze the soulfish, the somies that are inside. So if you look inside the little notes on your screen, you will see S's and M's and F's and R's and D's. I think that's it. Maybe an L. No, no L. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to sing. You're going to echo. Let's take this song phrase by phrase right from the top in soulfish. I sing, you echo. Do, do, re, 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 mi, re, do. Mi, 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 fa, fa, so. Do, do, re, 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 mi, re, do. Mi, 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 re, re, do. Do, so. Mi, 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 so. Do, 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 re, re, mi. So me 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 so me 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 re re do excellent. So let me ask you a question: Do you feel like you were singing new patterns the whole song, or do you feel like some of those patterns kind of repeated themselves? Hmm. Take a second to think about that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of those patterns repeated themselves. That's because they did. Okay, so let's try it again, and I want you to see if you can find some of the repeating patterns in this song. Ready? I sing you echo. Do, do, re, 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 mi, re, do. Mi, 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 fa, fa, so. Do, do, re, 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 mi, re, do. Me, 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 re, re, do. Do, so. Me, 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 so. Do, 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 re, re, me. Do, so. Me, 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 so. Me, 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 re, re, do. So, some patterns that I heard that repeated were do do re 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 mi re do i don't care if the rain falls down right it kind of makes sense the words are the same and then i also heard do so mi 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 so which is rain rain carry me away so lots of cool little repeated patterns now that we know the pieces now that we've analyzed the notes Let's see if we can sing it all together again. Here we go. So take a look at your screen. We're going to read the lyrics this time. One, two, three. I don't care if the rain falls down. I'm going to dance all day. I don't care if the rain falls down. I'm going to dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away. I'm going to dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away. I'm going to dance all day. Hey. Quick question, what's the highest note in the song? Hmm, what's the highest note? You can tell me the sofej, the somi word, or the lyric. And the lyric is rain. It's that high do. Do, so, do, rain, rain. Every time we get to that part. So one strategy I find myself doing when I have to sing that, you got to take a deep, big deep breath in right before you sing it because those high notes, they need more air. Air is the fuel to our singing mobile. Oh, a singing mobile. That sounds like my car, because I'm singing in my car quite a bit. Before we leave this song, there is one more thing we can do. Take a look at this. It's exactly the same, except you can see I've added a little, looks like an I, right on the third measure, when it says, I'm going to dance all day. Okay? So w this song can be sung in a round. Hmm, what's a round? Well, in a nutshell, a round is when two groups sing the same song at different times. So one group starts singing, and the other group comes in singing after they've already started. So if you look at the, the, the chart here, here's what's going to happen. One group is going to start singing, I don't care if the rain falls down. When they get to, I'm going to dance all day, that's when the second group, right where that I is, that's when the second group comes in from the beginning. So it's almost like they're echoing each other, okay? So here to help me demonstrate the round is my very special guest, Roxy Johnson, singer extraordinaire. Okay, Roxy's going to start the round. I'm going to come in second. Are you ready, Roxy? Yes. 
One, two, ready, go. I don't care if the rain falls down. I don't care if the rain falls down. I'm gonna dance all day. I don't care if the rain falls down. I'm gonna dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away. I'm gonna dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away. I'm gonna dance all day. Wow, thank you for that great singing, Roxy. So as you heard, Roxy started singing from the beginning. When she got to the Roman numeral one, I came in from the beginning, almost like I was echoing her. Let's do it one more time, and let's see if you can echo me. So I will start right from the beginning, and after I sing, I don't care if the rain falls down. You will come in right from the beginning and be my echo. I'm going to try to help you out the best I can on guitar. So listen for me trying to give you little cues on the guitar of what you should be singing. All right, here we go. Good luck. I don't care if the rain falls down. I'm going to dance all day. I don't care if the rain falls down. I'm going to dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away. I'm going to dance all day. Rain, rain, carry me away. I'm going to dance all day. Did you notice that time and when I did it with Roxy that whoever starts first, they finish first. Whoever starts second, they are left singing all alone at the end. Why do you think that is? Hmm. All right, friends, let's summarize our learning in the singing segment today. We learned how to sing a very cool song called I Don't Care When the If the Rain Falls Down. And not only did we analyze the somi notes that were inside, we also learned that you can sing it in a round. Do you remember what a round is? Almost like you're echoing, singing the same song at different times. Woo! I am tired from all this singing. I better jump in my singing mobile. Time to read the music notes. Okay, friends, it's time to read some rhythms. And we got a quick rhythm reading challenge today. Five examples with a twist. Let's start off with something fairly familiar that I think you should have no problem doing. I will do it once. See if you can keep up with me. Here we go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta. Let's try that one again a little bit slower. Only ta's and tt's. Ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, ti, 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 ta, ta. Hmm, before we leave this one, how many beats are in each measure? How many measures are there? Wow. First of all, let's answer that second question. How many measures are there? Well, there's two kind of boxes of music, right? Each box, each measure, has the same number of beats. And you could figure it out the old-fashioned way. Ta is one beat. Titi, that's another one beat. Ta, and then another ta. Two more beats. If you add them all up, you get four. Well, let's take a look at the second measure. Titi is one, another titi is another one. Two ta's, two more, another four beats. That's the old-fashioned way. A quicker way is to look right at the very beginning and you see two fours. That is called a time signature. The top number of the time signature tells you how many beats are going to be in each of those measures. And in this case, it's four. And look, right there on the top, there's a four. Now, you're probably seeing another four on the bottom and thinking, what is that bottom four stand for? Well, the bottom four tells you what kind of note we're counting as a beat. And that sounds super complicated because it is. But we need to kind of Keep in our minds that bottom four means a quarter note. Quarter note gets one beat. Well, a quarter note always gets one beat. So it gets really complicated, and as you get deeper into your studies of music, you will figure out the meaning of that bottom number. For, for today, the bottom number, the four, means a quarter note. The top number tells you how many quarter note beats in each measure. Four. We just figured that out. Let's look at another. Okay. I'm going to clap it. See if you can keep up with me. Ready, go. Ta, ta, ti, 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 ta. Okay. Why did I pause in between some of the notes? Because there's a rest. That little squiggly line is a rest. All right, let's try it again a little bit slower. Ready, go. Ta, ta, ti, 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 ta. Okay, let's talk about the beats. Well, now that we've learned this quick way, how many beats are in each measure? 
Well, there's four, because I looked at the time signature. It's the same. Four beats, quarter note gets the beat. But let's do it the old-fashioned way, because this one might trick you. We know a ta, quarter note, gets one beat. What about that rest? How many beats does that get? A lot of people think, oh, rest gets no beat. But I like to always ask the silly question, okay, I want you to go take a rest, but I want you to rest for zero minutes. If you rest for zero minutes, are you actually resting? No. So the rest, even though you don't make a sound, you have to know how long or how many beats to not make a sound for. So that quarter note rest, the squiggly line, that is a one beat rest. So we have ta, that's one. The rest is another one, another ta, another rest. There's your four beats. And in the second measure, tt, that's one, another tt, you're up to two, a ta, you're up to three. And the last rest, there's your fourth one. Let's try this one again. Notice, I'm not saying shh or rest on the rest. I'm trying to be totally silent. See if you can do that with me. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, ti, 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 ta. Awesome. Okay, here comes the trick. Hmm, something looks different. Two measures, but check out the time signature. How many beats will be in each of these measures? That top number has changed from four to three. Mr. Johnson, you tell us all the time you love four beats in every measure. I know, so I decided to change it up. We're going to try a couple of examples with only three beats in every measure. Let's do it together. Let's see what this sounds like. Ready and go. Tee, tee, ta, ta. Tee, tee, ta. Ta. Hmm. Feels very different, doesn't it? Let's try it again. Ready, go. Ti ti ta ta. Ti ti ta ta. If we just check out why are there are three beats, ti ti is one. Two ta's, there's your three. And the next measure, same or different? Exactly the same. Let's do it one more time for good luck. Ready, now, go. Ti ti ta ta. Ti ti ta ta. Okay, let's try our luck with another one. Ooh, look at this one. Check the time signature first. Three, four, meaning three beats in a measure. We're still counting quarter notes or taws as our beat. This one has some rests, though. Ooh, be careful. Ready? Here we go. Ta. Ti, ti, ta. Ooh, that rest, rest. How many people said rest, rest in their brain? If you didn't, I recommend you do. I'm going to challenge you to repeat this one twice in a row. Oh, boy. Here we go. One, two, go. Ta. Tee, tee, ta. Ta. Tee, tee, ta. Wow. How did you do? That is pretty tricky. Three beats in a measure feels very different than four beats in a measure. Let's do this one again. Can we repeat it three times in a row? Here we go. Ready now, go. Ta. Ti ti ta. Ta. Ti ti ta. Ta. Ti ti ta. Did you keep up with me? Hmm. Okay. Let's do one more. What's the time signature? Another three, four. Three beats in the measure. Ooh, this one's got a lot more titis, but if I'm kind of scanning it, it looks like the first measure is the same as the second measure. I think we're getting pretty good at this, so I'm just going to throw this challenge out right now four times in a row. Are you ready? Ready, now, go. Tee, 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 ta. Tee, 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 ta. That's once. Tee, 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 ta. Tee, 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 ta. Twice. Tee, 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 ta. Tee, 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 ta. Last time. Tee, 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 ta. How did you do reading rhythms? Let's summarize the learning for the rhythm segment today. We read and clapped a bunch of rhythm patterns, but really, we were talking about time signatures. Four beats in a measure, how you get those four beats, what a time signature looks like that tells you it gets four beats. That's four, four. Remember, the top number tells you how many beats. The bottom number tells you what kind of note you're counting as a beat. And in this case, again, we know a quarter note or a ta, that four, it always gets one beat. So it's kind of like, yeah, uh, I, I get it. And then we looked at 
a time signature of three, four felt very different. You had one less beat in each measure. You had to kind of keep track of the counting a little bit more carefully. Okay, my rhythm friends, no matter what, if you clapped and read along, you were reading music. That is amazing. Reading rhythms, clapping rhythms, reading music. Way to go. <laughs> and welcome to the wild card segment. And today we're going to get really wild. Wild with my man, Ludwig von. Ludwig von Beethoven, that is. Here is his classic song called Ode to Joy. Take a look at the screen. First, we're just going to work on singing this. As I'm looking at the notes, the first thing that might be problematic to me is the fact that there's two lines of words to read. Well, very simple. We read all the top lines. Then at the end, we should find a repeat sign. We go back to the beginning, and then we read all the bottom lines. If there's only one line of words to read, <laughs> take a guess. We're going to read that one. All right, here we go. This is the four in the beginning. So nothing, just instruments. Bottom line. Joyful in the songs we're singing, joined in music and in word, with the power that we're bringing, as one voice we will be heard. Singing brings us all together, and our voices would be small. So that is a timeless melody written by our friend Ludwig von Beethoven way back in 1822. Took him a couple of years to write that. And fun fact, Beethoven was pretty much deaf when he was writing that. He could not hear, which is pretty impressive to think that he heard the notes in his head and was smart enough to write them down fairly accurately. Well, obviously accurately, but I guess no one will ever know unless you can get inside Beethoven's brain. Did anyone invent the Beethoven brain machine yet? No, I don't think they did. So we're going to take that song. Now that we kind of know we got the melody in our head, we can sing it a little bit. What about if we added a recorder part? Now, Ode to Joy strikes fear into the heart of many recorder players because they know it to be a very, very difficult recorder song. Now, if I just tried to play the notes I sang on recorder, they would be very different from the ones that you've probably tried to play before. So instead, we're going to play a recorder accompaniment. That means it's a recorder part that goes with the singing. It's not going to sound anything like those notes we just sang. But if you play them at the same time, they will match up very, very nicely. So let's take a look. This super simple recorder part, it's really only two different sections that we're gonna keep on kind of repeating and mixing up. So here's the first section. If you take a look, I see some half notes, I see some quarter notes. Ooh, I see a weird dotted note. Let's just pat the rhythm to see what this sounds like. So say it with me. One, two, ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, at the end, that dotted quarter note, you say ta. It's a little bit longer than a regular quarter note. And then you go ti ta. That's what the little ta with the tail is the T. One T. We usually see two of them together, T T. This is what one of them alone looks like. Let's try that again. Ready, go. Ta, 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 
ta 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 ti ta. Okay. Only A and G notes I see on the staff. I see the little letters. Let's actually play this on recorder. It's only A and G. One, two, here we go. Okay, that is our first little recorder part. If you can play that with me, you will be able to play that while we do the song again in a couple of minutes here. So let's just go through this one part. This is the first part. This part happens quite a bit at the beginning and at the end. Okay, let's take a listen. One, two, play it with me. Excellent. So we do that one twice to start, and then we get to this recorder part. Well, just by looking at it, looks like there's more notes. There's a lot more tas. There's a lot. There's even a few tts, and there's a rest at the end. No half notes this time. So what are you going to automatically be able to tell me about this part? Yeah, it's going to feel a little bit faster. Also, what notes do you see on the staff? It's only A's. No more G's in this part. One note. So if we're going to play that one note confidently with the music, we got to know the rhythm. So let's clap the rhythm out here. One, two, here we go. Ta, ta, ta. Ta ta ti ti ta 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 ti ti ta 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 ta, and then a rest at the end. Great. Let's try that one more time because if you're gonna have success with this while you're playing this recorder part along to my singing, you gotta know the rhythm. Let's try it again. One, two, here we go. Ta 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 ti ti ta 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 ti ti ta 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 ta. Awesome. Let's play it on an A note. One, two, three. Great. So you will see that part anytime we get to the singing brings us all together. Anytime we get to that part. Anytime we're at a different part, you're going to see the first recorder part. Here is the challenge and the test, my friends. You've learned the two pieces of the recorder part. I'm going to sing the entire song again. Your job will be to try to play that recorder part along with the singing. And to make that job a little bit easier, I'm going to try to play your recorder part rhythm on my guitar to kind of help you feel it because the melody, the part that I'm singing, and your recorder part, they are different, remember, so they're not going to be exactly the same. All right, let's give this a whirl. And here comes your half notes. One, two, one, two, three. did you do keeping up so i was trying to play the rhythm of your recorder part on my guitar to kind of give you an idea of are you staying with the guitar let's do the second verse let's give it one more chance here all right here we go Get those half notes going ta, ta, one two one two three joyful in the songs we're singing join in music and Singing brings us all to 
friends, let's summarize the learning for this part. We looked at and sang a timeless melody, Beethoven's Ode to Joy, and then we added a recorder accompaniment part that was different. But when we analyzed that recorder accompaniment part, it was only two notes, and we really kept repeating these two different patterns kind of over and over throughout the song. And it might have been hard because it didn't follow the melody, but if we kind of used our knowledge of reading notes and rhythm, then we could make it fit in, especially if you listen to the guitar. Woo! That was a wild card segment for the books. Shh! I'm trying to listen. Are you ready to do some listening? I certainly am. Friends, I could not get enough of Beethoven after we did the Ode to Joy in the wild card segment. In the listening segment today, we are going to look at another extremely famous Beethoven piece, the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. That's right. When most people think of Beethoven, they instantly think, da 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 That's because it's probably the most famous four notes ever written, like almost ever. So, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, he wrote it between the years 1804 and 1808. And it's a really long piece. It's about an hour long. But the first, the famous part that we know comes from the first movement, Allegro con Brio. So we're not just going to listen to any performance of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. We are going to take a look at a really cool video called Line Riders, Beethoven's Fifth. Now, Line Riders is a series of YouTube videos by this guy, Mark Robbins. And basically what he shows you is this line with a little tiny stick figure riding a sled along the line. But the line matches up perfectly to the music. So while you're watching this very entertaining video, I want you to think about a couple of things. Number one, I want you to see how the little figure riding the line shows so many things about the music. It shows the speed of the music. If the music's going fast, the little character's going to go fast. It shows the rhythm. Sometimes he'll kind of jump off of one line into another line, but it matches up perfectly with the rhythm of the instruments, okay? You also get to see the shape of the melody, meaning that if the notes are kind of smooth and flowing, the line will be smooth and flowing. If the notes are kind of jagged, the line will be jagged. Sometimes the line is bumpy. Sometimes there's spaces in the line. All of this matches up with the sound of the music. And I want you to just pay attention to that fact because it's super, super cool. My favorite part in the Line Rider Beethoven's Five is right around 44 seconds, two line riders appear. And if you follow each one, Each one kind of represents a different group of instruments. So the different groups of instruments that are playing, they interact in a different way, and you're going to see those two line riders interacting in a different way. Super cool. The last thing I want you to pay attention to, if you look throughout the video, you're going to see all these little letters. You'll see some Fs, you'll see some Ps, maybe some MPs, maybe some MFs. Those are all dynamic markings. So take a look at the chart. Basically, a P stands for piano, which means soft. If I put an M in front of the P, that means medium soft, which is a little bit louder, mezzo piano. If I have two Ps, that means pianissimo, which means really soft. On the opposite side of that, you have F, meaning loud, forte. If I have an MF, that means mezzo forte, medium loud. Not really loud, but kind of medium loud. If I have two Fs, that means fortissimo. And you will see two Fs because Beethoven likes to get loud couple of other questions. Think of how different this song is compared to the other Beethoven piece that we did. Now, Beethoven wrote this song, you know, about 20 years before he wrote Ode to Joy. He was kind of in a bad place. Beethoven led a pretty stressful life and he had a lot of a lot of things that made him upset and he got his frustrations out through his music. And this part of the song, this part of the Fifth Symphony definitely shows you that frustration. So, Happy listening, and I really want you to see how these lines show you the different elements of Beethoven's magnificent Fifth Symphony. What did we learn? And welcome to the wrap-up. Wow, what an episode. Started it all off 
with the singing segment. We sang that round. You know, it's really difficult to sing around. A lot of people I know, they like to block their ears so they can only hear themselves, so they only focus on themselves. And I'll tell you, that method, it actually helps initially. That means at the very beginning, it's going to help you get through. But eventually, you want to hear what the other people are doing while you're doing what you should be doing, right? You want to learn everybody's part. And I know that can be really tricky, but I recommend go back to that uh, singing segment and try to sing the round with me right at the beginning. It is not an easy thing to do, but once you do, I promise you, it feels so cool. When I was singing with Roxy, the sound of our voices together, we were singing the same song at different times, just like around. There were some really fun moments in there. So I really recommend try, try, improving your skills on singing around you won't be sorry once you get it trust me then in the rhythm segment mr johnson finally throws some rhythms out there in three four three beats in a measure instead of four that feels really different and in that segment we really looked at time signatures if it says four four tells you we have four beats in a measure that's the top number the bottom number is telling us that quarter notes get one beat which is kind of like, uh, duh, quarter notes always get one beat. And most of the time they do, and that's how we learn them. When we look at other time signatures, maybe in some future episodes, you'll see how that's not always the case. But we don't need to worry about that now. And we also looked at 3-4, meaning three beats in a measure, quarter notes still getting the beat. So those measures and of rhythms in 3-4 time, they felt a lot different than the 4-4 time measures we're used to hearing. Then we went to the wild card and we got to sing Ode to Joy. I love singing Ode to Joy. The words talk about being joyful while you're singing. And that's exactly how it makes me feel when I actually do sing it. So hopefully if you sang along with me, you felt joyful as well. And then we learned that super easy recorder part, right? It really wasn't that hard. It was just two little sections that kind of kept repeating. Only an A and a G. I know it's kind of tricky to feel the pattern because it's very different from the singing part. But once you get it, once you can kind of feel how it works together, again, it feels really cool. Just like singing the round. Once you play music and make music work, make different parts of music work together, that's what music's all about. Think about it. If every song was just one thing, right? If the singer sang the same thing as the guitar, as the drum, as whatever instrument you're adding, it'd be pretty boring. Music's interesting because you hear lots of different things at the same time happening at the same time. So the more we can practice that, the better we get at it, and then the more enjoyment we can make. And then finally, in the listening room, we watched that very entertaining line rider video of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. I love watching that. Every time I watch it, I pick up something new. I notice a little bump in the line. I notice how he falls in a certain way. I catch a little dynamic symbol out of the corner of my eye. That's a really great one. And if you read the comments on that video, apparently that was used as an advertisement on YouTube. And a lot of people said, wow, this is the first ad that I actually watched the entire thing. Because if you're like me, a lot of times, you know, you watch the little bit of the ad and then you skip it because you want to get to the video. You don't really care about the ad. But that's that's a cool ad. I would probably watch that ad. So go watch that video again. And not only that, that is like one of the most famous songs. Ooh, maybe in a future episode, I have a variation on Beethoven's Fifth Symphony that you can play on recorder. Maybe we'll throw that in a wild card. Ooh, stay tuned for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, cows and mice. Cows and mice. Thank you so much for listening to Remote Control Music Class. You can connect with me on the interwebs. I have an email as johnsonjr at westerly.k12.ri.us. But you can see that below. I also have a couple of websites. Explore my other YouTube videos. Subscribe to my channel. It's all good in the neighborhood. Thank you so much for listening. Remote Control Music Class. Follow your adventure down a musical path. Remote Control Music Class. Learn a step by music, gonna have a blast.